Is it working? Oh my God. I've had so many bugs with YouTube Live uh, for some reason in the browser it didn't want to work, on the mobile phone it didn't want to work. What the hell? <laughs> What's up guys? So who is here? I, ha I had to go on the smartphone because it didn't work with my computer. So I'm, I'm a bit lost, but whatever. We can make this work, no problem. <clears throat> Ah, Theo Sama, I know it's working now. Okay, are you hearing me? Bryson, welcome. James, Nicholas, oh, it's been a long time. Okay, it's working, oh my God. I, I've, I've been sitting on this thing like for an hour. It was a real nightmare. I don't know what's going on with the uh, browser version of the uh, webcam streaming feature in, in YouTube. It's kind of weird. Didn't work, worked, and then didn't work back again, whatever. How are you guys doing? It's been like, feels like a, a lifetime almost. Hit the like button, gents. <laughs> Bryson, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be back in the proper sense of the term because uh, I have still many things to do, but I had a little bit of uh, free time today, so I, I just figured out I wanted to uh, unbox a brand new watch as of today. Actually, I went through a um, kind of a watch apocalypse. It's you know, it's on its way. And it's because I've, I've gotten rid of pretty much many of my watches. Uh, Theo, do you, did you see your SKX 013, SNX 79 mod on Insta? Uh, I'm not quite sure about that. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm, I have to catch up with all of the messages that you've sent me on, on uh, Instagram. I've been, I've been a bad Instagrammer. Um, James, you're wearing a SKX 030. Oh, no, you got one when I was away. That's a cool one. It's right there. My, my girlfriend, she didn't like it. And now she thinks it's probably the best watch that I have. She really, really likes it. I mean, this, this baby is so fun. I've actually seen, um, wait a second. I've seen mods of, uh, the SKX 007 from DLW watches or something like that. I can't quite remember. And they looked absolutely amazing. Uh, it has like a, a deep sea bezel and a um, brushed metal bezel insert. And it looked absolutely gorgeous. I cannot show you that because I'm, you know, this um, function where I can show you my screen is now discontinued on YouTube. Um, so there you go. Uh, yeah, the Jubilee, it rattles. Not everybody likes it, but it is so freaking comfortable. Uh, yeah, that's a fun watch. I've been wearing back my, uh, my SNXS mod, uh, within the, uh, which, what is the reference again? I don't know. I said SNK393. Yeah, that's it. Case. So, uh, that's a fun one. I actually do not have the black Casio edifice that I showed you on Instagram because it's my girlfriend's and she's wearing it today. Uh, but I got myself the white one because you guys know that I like the uh, Omega Aquaterra more than ever. And when I saw the white one, I was like, what? It looks exactly the same thing, like for a fraction of the cost. Obviously it's not the same watch, uh, but I thought it might be a good idea to check it out. It's a 38 millimeters watch. Uh, it's so, freaking lightweight because of that. And uh, it looks amazing. I mean, the finish on this thing is just crazy. It pops, there's a lot of, gl not a glitter, a lot of uh, light reflection. It really looks like a pretty cool thing. I gotta tell you. <clears throat> oh, Bryson, what happened? Uh, many things happened, uh, mainly f <laughs> about um, work and family. So, um, you know, my, my feather wasn't well, and uh, at the same time, I had to figure out something with work. And so this is why I quite didn't have the time to continue making these videos on, on the standards because it, it takes a lot of time. And so, yeah, sometimes you just have to prioritize what's important, and it was in front of me. So I was working on a brand new project. Uh, it's launched now. There are still so many things to do, but now the uh, initial phase is um, on its way. 
And um, that's why maybe in the future when I will have more time, I, I want to come back to, to posting videos about watches. But as of now, my, my schedule is kind of tight. So I will, do, I will do my best. Bear with me, guys. <clears throat> hey, Richard, it's been a long time. Make a vid about affordable uh, $200, three 38 millimeters watches. Uh, do I have some? No, I, I don't think I posted something with affordable watch. Actually, this one is going to be perfect. So, Amazon Prime, as you can see, uh, I ordered this one uh, when I was still in Italy uh, on holiday. And so here's the story. We were in a mall with my girlfriend and then we were just shopping around and she called me. She calls me and she said, can you please go and check out this watch? And she showed me the black model that I showed you on Instagram. And I was like, what? This watch looks awesome. I knew about the 42 millimeters version. Actually, we saw that one in Lille, France, like, I don't know, maybe four months ago. And I thought to myself, it looks just like an Aquaterra, obviously with a lot of differences, but the general design cues were there. And I thought to myself, this is such a pity that it's only available in 42 millimeters, but it appears that I was wrong because it actually is available in 38 as well. And so you have the um, black model that my girlfriend has, you have the blue model. Uh, actually, I've seen it live and it's kind of a dark blue, pretty cool. And then you have the white model. And if you've been following the channel, you know that I like the Aquaterra uh, 38 in white. Not quite sure I will ever get this watch or even if I get it, get it in white. But I thought it looked so close to the, to the real deal that I wanted to check it out. So without further ado, let's open this. You didn't come here to hear about molds. Okay. Good old scissors. I don't do this kind of uh, knife EDC thing, just not me. Okay, so. Um, you have a over cover. Don't know how you'll, you, it's actually, it looks uh, a little bit like the uh, Seiko Sarb um, cover that you have on top. Then you have a classic box edifice and let's open it. Nicholas, that's exactly why you came here. <laughs> okay, here it is, guys. Okay. So, whoops. I know it's quite a bit, it's kind of big for uh, my small six interest, so I will have to uh, size it. And somebody uh, asked me on Instagram, I think, if this watch would be good for uh, a wrist that is 17 and a half centimeters, which is pretty much, uh, I would say seven inch. Is that right? Yes, something like that. And I think so because it, it, the, the bracelet is kind of large, right? Okay, let me show you this. I hope that the camera on this phone will make this watch justice. There you go. Please focus. doesn't want to focus. See what I told you? Look at the hour markers at the hour hands. Um, and yeah, obviously you have that arrow on the hour hand and it really looks like a, an Aquaterra from, from afar. So while waiting for the real deal, I'm telling you guys, this looks very cool. <clears throat> right, okay, so let me just remove that tag right here, which is always a pain in the neck. You guys have been seeing my reviews, I think, and you know that I'm not the best for that. It's like taking me like an hour to do that. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, uh, or maybe not, I don't know, because it, it's like, it can literally take like five minutes. I don't want to cut it. Um, I don't know why, by the way, because really the tag is important, not really the string. But there you go, guys. By the way, I didn't uh, check out anything about watches for the past few months. So I don't know about new releases. 
obviously uh, I talked about the new Seiko 5s and I may have some news about that but not quite now um, but that's about it I, I really didn't know I, I don't know what what was going on in the watch uh, community um, oh by the way I just saw um, a picture of Teddy who just he didn't cross 100,000 subscribers on YouTube but he posted that he got his play button so I wanted to congratulate him because it's doing, he's doing such an amazing job with his channel. So anyway, uh, the reference you guys asked, it's the EFV 110D 7AVUEF. There you go. Okay. Pure Casio style. Uh, I should drop a link in the description, right? Uh, you will find it after this uh, live. Anyway, let me remove this protection right here on the screen and I've seen it live, but I've seen the 42 millimeters version, not the 38. Uh, the white one, uh, in, in the bigger size, you can have it with a um, metal bracelet, just like this one, or you can have it with a leather band. And if you take it, if you take that one, then you will have the, uh, what is it? One of the inscriptions on the dial here is going to be like uh, in orange, which is super cool, but it's not the case with this one. So I thought to myself, maybe I should pop it on a, uh, you know, a NATO strap with uh, orange edges. I think it could look pretty cool. But I'm telling you guys, the finish on this thing. Oh, by the way, look at this case. I, I want to show you next to my SARP. Okay, um, Orinoco, it's very rare to have a Casio with the small diameter like this one. Yeah, it's true. Specifically in the uh, edifice uh, range, they're like, they're like super big. I like them. I like the, the edifice uh, watches because some of them are really interesting when it comes to design and they're like full packed of features, but they are so big. <clears throat> MDV106 obviously rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> um, yeah, it's an everyday watch, uh, Johan, that's for sure. And it, it really looks, look, look at this, look at this. I mean, this is my SARB and this is the, uh, the edifice, right? I'm not talking about the dial. Look at the case. I mean, <laughs> when I saw that case, see how they, they really are kind of in the same vibe, those curved lugs and there's a detail which is very close to the SARB. So if you know the SARB, you know that, ah, oh, maybe I cannot get this thing to focus. There's a lip right here on the leg. Maybe I should come forward to make this thing focus. See, there's, there's a lip right here on the leg. And you actually have the exact same thing on the edifice. See, I don't know if it's visible because of the shitty camera here. There you go. So I would say that this, uh, this case really resembles the SARB. It's really, really close. But for some reason, it wears smaller. I will have to, to check the dimension because you, can, you guys can see that they're not quite the same size, right? I mean, the, the Casio, for some reason, appears even smaller than the SARB. I don't know why. <clears throat> Can you please tell me, uh, thank you so much guys, thank you, be careful. My reviews of the SKX013S and SK79K are the best on the internet. Thank you so much. Can you please tell me uh, what is the size of the dial? So, uh, Casio, and they're pretty much right on the money when it comes to the size, uh, when you see it on their websites. They are telling that this is a 38 millimeters watch, but for some reason it appears smaller than my SARB, which is also a 38 millimeters watch. So if you want something small, you can go with this one, no problem. Oops, sorry, trying to catch up with the uh, comments here. Model name is this one. Oops, EFV 110D 7 blah, blah, blah. So the one, the one is the uh, black one and I don't know the reference about the, uh, uh, the blue one. Okay, so on my wrist, as you can see, Size is just perfect. Oops, my smartphone wanted to make an update now. Bad timing, I guess. Okay, um, 
The thing is, for some reason, every time I show a uh, watch on camera, it appears bigger than it actually is. And so, there you, there you go. So it's not a sweeping second because that's a, um, that's a quartz watch. But the thing is, I wanted to check this out with this brand new watch. For some reason, Casio in their G, uh, G Steel line and Edifice line, they always, they always check that the, the seconds hands line up, uh, with, lines up with the, um, the seconds, the minute track, right? Check this out. This thing would not focus. It's really hard to show on camera, obviously, because it's not the best camera in the world. And you have some parallax effects as well. Maybe you will see when it comes at six, right on the money, okay? So I don't care if a watch has a quartz movement. What, what bothers me is when that, uh, that uh, ticking second hand uh, is going all over the place, like between those uh, minute markers. I don't like it. Whatever. This is like first world problems, right? <laughs> so there again, um, here it is on my wrist. Uh, I have this light making, oh, there you go. It's, it actually looks smaller in real life than it is uh, on camera, I'm telling you guys. Not, not by much, but it is the perfect size. That's a pretty cool watch, I'm telling you guys. The good thing is that you do not have to think about this watch being on time in the morning. So obviously this is not, not a solar watch. This is not a radio controlled watch. It is just a simple um, quartz watch. But still, it has a battery life of three years, I think, uh, from what I've seen uh, on the website. And it's because of that, it's lightweight. It's not the best bracelet in the world because obviously you're not gonna get the same quality as the Sarb, right? This one is, maybe you can hear it. This, this one is way more substantial with the Sarb. But still, it, it looks pretty good and it feels pretty good. So it's not as flimsy as, uh, for example, the uh, Invicta that I had. It's gone now. Um, but it's still good. I think you really do not have to think about a third-party bracelet if you like to rock your watches on the bracelet, which is my case. Um, just because I think it, it works with every outfit that you can throw at it, okay? So there you go, guys. I think it's a pretty cool watch. I will not size it to my wrist live because it takes quite a bit of time and I think I will destroy your ears with the hammer. <laughs> so I will not do that. But. I mean, look at that bezel, that case shape and finish. It's, it's hard to show you, but it, it really shines and it's super legible for some reason. It kind of reminds me of the kind of legibility that you have on Grand Seiko's. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, I heard that Casio is making sweeping second edifice. Oh, which one? Uh, maybe that's a, like a mecha quartz kind of thing. Um, I don't know. Nothing more beautiful than an alliance seconds hand on a quartz. Yes, Nicholas. I just don't understand how brands like Breitling cannot get this right. When I see those watches that cost like north of $4,000 and those seconds hand are not uh, aligned, I just don't understand. When I was 17, I bought a Casio edifice, but that one was too big and heavy, so I gave it to my grandpa. <laughs> Casio watches are built like tanks, so no wonder it, it's still working. The model number, again, oh, loom shot, I don't have, maybe I can show you that, maybe. Wait a second. Uh, oh my God. EFV 110D7 blah, blah, blah. You just have to type the seven in Google and it will uh, auto-populate the reference number for you. Let me go and check out if I have my UV lamp handy. Give me one sec. <clears throat>
No, there you go. Okay, so I don't know if it's gonna work because there's uh, automatic exposure here on this uh, smartphone, but nah, nah. Clearly, this is not a SKX kind of loom. Uh, I'll try to switch that light, the main light, off, but I don't think you will see anything. It's it's just not, not not good. Which is actually pretty cool because I don't mind um, having this kind of. No, this this will not work. Maybe I'll have to. Oh, let's try it again. Okay, so this is what you get with the uh, with this one. It, it really doesn't shine bright in real life. Uh, whereas, uh, let me show you, where is it? There you go, the SKX. Yeah, that's a totally different story. I mean, look at this, boom, okay? So the loom is not great, really. Uh, let me just shine both of them with some light and I will show you, hopefully, you will see the difference. There you go, see? The, the SKX is just super bright and the, um, the Casio, the, the hands are brighter than the hour indices and it doesn't appear to be like super, you know, the same color everywhere for some reason. So you will not get this watch for the loom, that's for sure. <clears throat> Showtime again, okay, so. Uh, Casio A700 series, digital watch, but has an elegant look to it. You know what? I've been uh, now checking um, radio control watches by Casio because I want to find like the ultimate everyday watch that you don't have to think about. So I want it to be solar and to be radio controlled, just like a G-Shock. The problem with G-Shocks is that you cannot always wear this kind of things every, well, you can if you want, but sometimes it looks kind of, um, you know, out of place. Not that I, I mind, really, I, I really don't care. But sometimes you just want to have something that's more, you know, maybe more luxurious to look at. And there's the uh, Casio um, Oceanus, which is pretty cool. But they have some other models as well in the edifice range. And I just, you know, went and checked some out. Uh, I found one which is a 40 millimeters one, but I don't remember the uh, the, the reference. But I will I will share it with you if you guys want on Instagram, I guess. <clears throat> so Nicholas, you just bought your grandpa a pulsar. Okay, not the day just he deserves, but I hope uh, I can one day get it for him. Yeah, um, I think I I featured a pulsar in one of my articles on my website and I see them quite a bit. I do not, uh, I didn't have the, the, uh, the occasion to try one as of now, but they, they look like pretty good uh, affordable watches. SKX Loom, James, yeah, I know this thing just, uh, you know what, the Loom on my Steinhardt is very, very cool too. Um, Johan, as they say, every collection needs a Casio. Yeah, I know. Uh, mine is an edifice chrono panda dial. Oh, cool. Uh, bought it after my wife lent my then Henry panda. <laughs> cool. Uh, but put it on the vintage racing strap and it looks the part. I, I actually had a chrono edifice back in the day and it was all black. Uh, maybe actually we're sharing the same model. If memory serves, it's the EFR 526. Oh my God, if, if, I, got, if I get this right, I don't know what's happening, guys, because I never remember this kind of things. Computer doesn't want to work for some reason. What the hell? Okay, there you go. Uh, so, EFR 526. No, 526, yes, that's the one. So if you go and check out EFR 526, you will see this. I don't know if it's gonna work fine. 
with the smartphone, but there you go. Okay, so this is the model that I had, and it exists with the panda dial, and it's very hard to find. Um, <clears throat> uh, you hope the edifice chrono panda uh, was 38. If memory serves, this one was 40, and it wore pretty okay for my wrist, but I just didn't wear it because I like simpler uh, designs. Uh, but it's, it was a very cool watch. It, yeah, it really looked cool. Is my G-Shock big? I have three of them. Um, so, I have three of them. First one is the um, Square G-Shock GWM5610, which is just fine. It may look biggish on the, uh, the camera, but I'm telling you, in real life, it's just perfect. It's a G-Shock. You don't want a G-Shock to look tiny, okay? So, this one is the G-Shock for small wrists. It's solar and radio control, just like the other ones because I want my G-Shocks to be a kind of, uh, you know, put on my wrist, do not think about it, kind of watch, and they do it. The second one, you guys love it. It's the uh, G-Steel. This thing is huge. This is what I want to show off a little bit. This is the one I, I, I put on. You know what? This watch is, is packed with features, and I think it looks cool. So if you like to have something that's a bit bolder, this is uh, where you should go. And it's a big watch. I'm not going to tell you. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, but this is exactly the purpose of this watch. I didn't buy it to go under the radar. And the third one, I just got it because I, th I think it's the coolest model of them all. And that is the GW7900. Uh, and it's a big watch as well. But really, this one looks like a big G-Shock, but not overly huge. Remember, guys, these are like super tool watches. They are meant to be biggish. The only gripe that I have with this one is this. Right? So the band that's sticking out. But besides that, I think it's probably the coolest uh, G-Shock that I have. <clears throat> uh, Oronoko, how is the weight? Uh, so the Casio is way lighter than the Sard. You can feel the difference uh, like from the outside, the metal in itself, and from the inside. Obviously because a quartz movement will be much lighter than an automatic movement. So this will disappear on your wrist uh, after a few minutes, I guess. And Actually, that's a good thing too. If you don't want to have something heavy and bulky on your wrist, this is very cool. What happened to Epstein? What is it? Who is it? Um, you got the G, be careful, you got the G1500, uh, 5600 without atomic radio. Yeah, I know. Some of you guys prefer not having that feature in the United States. Um, I just prefer to have it because it's working here in Belgium. Funny thing is, uh, I tried to make my, um, G so I, I, I had this G-Shock with me while traveling in Italy, and it could not uh, synchronize to the atomic clock in South Italy for some reason. So I guess it's kind of uh, useless right there if you want to have it. Maybe I had bad luck at the time I was there, but it, it never, never synced. Who cares? Anyway, that's a quartz watch, so, you know, it's been running maybe one second late uh, for two weeks. I can live with that. <clears throat> Erwin, I was planning to buy a G-Shock just like yours, but in the end I have bought a Vostok Amphibia Scuba dude with a teal dial. These have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> That's a pretty cool watch, but I mean a G-Shock and, and a Scuba dude are very different watches, but they're cool. So if you prefer like dive watches, Totally get it. So, okay, let's get back to this uh, Casio. 38 mil, super lightweight, super comfortable. I, give, I have to tell you because I already uh, tried the black version from my girlfriend. I don't know if the dial is a sunburst dial. It doesn't appear so. It does appear that there's some kind of super light glitter. I'm not quite sure about that. 
It's actually a 3D uh, dial. I mean, if you look at the, um, the minute track, it is recessed. Why is it not focusing? Okay, you cannot see it from that far, but the minute track is recessed and there are actually some grooves in it, but you cannot see uh, that far away. I will have to uh, make some close-up shots to show you that. Um, and you have a, uh, it's a chapter ring, but it's so steep that it's almost like a heart. See, and from afar with a black, um, black band, it will really, really look like uh, an Aquaterra. So if you look the, if you love the look of the Aquaterra, this may be the watch to go for uh, while waiting for the real deal. Actually, this is why I got it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, TR, you just got a Steinhardt Ocean 39. Well, congrats, because that's a very cool watch uh, with the ceramic bezel. I, lo I love my Steinhardt. I've been wearing this thing quite a bit. Actually, for the past three months, I've been wearing my Steinhardt and my Square G-Shock. That's it, period. These are the two watches that I wore. So I could very well let go of all my other watches. <clears throat> uh, Nicolas, you just saw that Timex added another automatic watch with, on their lineup, a 40 and 42 millimeters water brewery. I think I saw that for whatever reason. Let me check that out. Water brewery, 40 millimeters. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you guys cannot see what I'm seeing. Um, yes, I've seen it, and I've seen it in the flesh. Um, it looks just like another Timex, I would say. Um, but if you like the design, I mean, like, simple, big, uh, big simple numerals, that, that's definitely a pretty good pick. Nakmat, yes, I know it's been a long time. I don't know if I'm gonna be active like I used to. I don't think so, unfortunately, but I will try to do my best and post uh, videos every now and then. Uh, okay, <laughs> you guys want the reference yet again. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Nicholas, for me, the Timex doesn't do anything either. It's, it's, it's not bold enough. So that's the EFV 110 d 7 and all the useless letters. I'm trying to, to show you a good angle to see that dial. It looks like grayish here, but it's not the case. Actually, it's not white. It's, I would say, ever so slightly a cream color, but not as much as my Sarb. You, you will not be able to pick this on my smartphone, but the Sarb has a more ye uh, yellowish tint to it. Oh, maybe you can. What a, wait a second. Maybe you can. See, the Sarb appears to be um, more yellow, and it's the case. In real life, I can really tell the difference. The, the edifice is way wider, which I prefer, actually. I may let go the SARB. Boom, there I said it. It's a pretty fine watch. I've seen that um, Her uh, Horology House got himself one SARB 035. Nakmat, uh, my video was the main reason to buy the SNKL 45. That's a cool watch and you're happy with it. Now uh, in the summer rocking the SKX 013. There you go, two watch collection from Casio, from uh, Seiko, that's all you need. <clears throat> Johan, I would put that Casio so fast on a brown or tan leather band. They actually have one, uh, the bigger model, the 42 millimeters, it is available on the tan uh, leather band. Let me show you that. Uh, e Is it again? FV100 for the bigger model, D. Uh, seven something. There you go. <clears throat> so, 
So you have the WR100 inscription in orange and the uh, seconds hand, as well as the, see? This one is, it's even cheaper here in Belgium. It's like 70 euros. <laughs> That's such a good deal, man. The Sarma has prettier hands. I have to say yes to that. Uh, not because I like the style of the uh, edifice hands, but I think the execution could have been better. I mean, that arrow for me is just a tiny bit too small. I think they should have gone with something bolder. You want to go with an arrow? No problem. Just go with, uh, just go with an arrow, right? Uh, but Dauphin hands, they never disappoint. I still think that the Casio is easier to read in hard light conditions. Uh, let me... Well, smartphone is too bad to even show anything on those watches, like a, a white, white patch and that's it. But maybe you can see from here that it's easier to read the time on, on this Casio. Anyway. <clears throat> Seven R Slender. Uh, hope all my current project and family life turns out well. Yes, now it, it's 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 going all right. I still have things to take care of, but uh, things got under control, fortunately. Um, <clears throat> Nicholas, congrats on your channel growth while I was away. Yes, that that's the beauty of YouTube. I mean, when you create videos about uh, topics that are not tied to news, well, YouTube continues to show them to people. So that is very, very cool. And by the way, let me check that out live because I want to thank everybody who joined uh, the party since I went away and that was, I cannot even remember. Uh, when was that video? Don't remember, but let me see detailed statistics. Uh, it was something in April, that's possible. And yeah, I was around 12,000 subscribers, 13, 13, something like that. And, and now it's like more than 18,000. That is so cool. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, but that, that's the beauty of YouTube. It's like, it's like never ending. And for some reason on some days you have videos that pop out more and then they go away. I didn't quite uh, figure out that algorithm thing because my videos, I make them for specific keywords, which is not the same if you want to uh, have videos that trigger the algorithm. It's not the same thing. But anyway, thank you so much, guys. Uh, yes, 20,000 will be around the corner. I guess like a, in a big, like 40 days, something like that at the current rate, but whatever. Um, the real startup show here is the watch. There you go, guys. It's almost noon here. Uh, noon, right? In Belgium. And I will have to go with, uh, go on and actually go back to work. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you like this live unboxing. Uh, I hope that I will be posting a review of this thing in the upcoming weeks. Do not wait for it like in four days because I don't buy these uh, super short term uh, reviews because you have to wear a watch in order to know if it's working uh, for you or not, if it's comfortable, if it's um, working with different outfits, if there's uh, a problem with the movement, this kind of thing. So that's why I like to wait at least four weeks most of the time, six weeks, maybe more. Uh, but anyway, I will try my best to uh, not let you down and post some videos every now and then. Thank you again so much for joining. And let me check this out. Nope. I, I never saw those. What? Okay. I never use the, the, the new uh, version of the uh, YouTube streaming app on the smartphone, so I didn't know what those filters were. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, and I'll catch you later, uh, probably uh, very soon on Instagram, and 
later on YouTube.